Welcome to the Why Factor, a chance to work out why we do what we do. BBC World Service podcasts are supported by advertising. Thank you for downloading from the BBC. For details of our complete range of podcasts and our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com slash podcasts. BBC World Service, I'm Mike Williams with The Y Factor. At the moment, I'm on a horse-drawn omnibus taking tourists around London. Today, why do we travel? Why do we leave the comforts of our own homes and travel around the world? Our guide is Louise Chapman. We're at wonderful Westminster Bridge. If you approach it from the south side, it's that view that Keats described in 1802. Earth hath not anything to show more fair than the view from Westminster Bridge and how right he was. Look at this wonderful architecture of Charles Barry and the magnificent Big Ben, first struck in 1859, leaning ever so slightly, that tower originally. There we are, just on cue, five o'clock. Louise, you spend your time guiding people around London. Why do people come here? Why do people travel at all? I think it's to see life in someone else's shoes, isn't it? It's to explore another culture, taste different foods, see how other people live, and, uh, yeah, I think it is broadening the mind. Are you a traveller? I'm very fortunate. I have travelled quite a bit. What's your next trip? We're off to Peru and the Galapagos Islands. That's always been a dream of mine to go there. Stay home. I honestly don't get the idea of traveling for pleasure. P.J. O'Rourke is an American writer, a foreign correspondent for decades. He's also the author of several books, one of them called Holidays in Hell, about his travels through the war zones of the world. Still, his real holiday hell is very different. I have been dragooned into a little bit of overseas vacation travel and, you know, standing behind 7,500 Chinese tourists, that kind of thing. I simply don't get what the fun is. I mean, if you have a reason to be someplace, I mean, I've had some fabulous tourist experiences, but only in the middle of a war. I got to see uh, Petra alone because it was the outbreak of the first Gulf War and everybody was frightened to be in Jordan. I was in Egypt after 9-11 in a room at the Ginza Hotel looking out on the Great Pyramid of Cheops and there was no one there. I mean, those things are beyond precious. That's fun. What is it that you object to in regular tourist travel? People. (laughs) Yes, people. Too many people on your planet messing up the view for you. Yeah, people with selfie sticks, you know. It's not the tourism you object to, it's the tourists. It's the tourists, exactly, yeah. I think naturally humans are bound to move, and we were, from the beginning, nomadic and have moved through history. David Montero is the head buyer here at Stamford's in London, one of the oldest travel book and map shops in the world. It's been in business since 1853. Later on, people will travel for pilgrimage, for some religious reasons. People will travel also for war, to go and fight and conquer new places. People will travel for business, for commerce, and that's been happening for a long, long time. But most of your customers here are tourists. They travel for fun, I guess. Yes. One of the reasons that I think we travel that way these days, and, and we like to travel, we like to be in other places... It's something to do with identity and who we are and what's our place in the world. In the sense that sometimes it's good to take a step back or a step outside and try to do something different, look at things anew, uh, see things in a different way. To better see where you are and who you are and what things mean to you. I think travel is a good way to do that. If you go somewhere that is more different than somewhere that is more similar to where you already are, that happens a bit easier, I guess. An exploration or an escape? Well, perhaps it's both, and and perhaps it can be both at the same time. And down in the lower ground floor is the World Book Room, books that will guide you around 
Australia, China, Mongolia, Taiwan, the Caucasus and Central Asia, Japan and Southeast Asia, the Caribbean, Mexico, Central America, the whole world is here, Africa around the corner, the Indian subcontinent just ahead. And many people here browsing the maps and the guidebooks. Excuse me, can I disturb you? I'm from the BBC. We're talking to people about travelling, about why they travel. Travelled in North America, South America, Africa, Australia. Never been to India, never been to the Far East, so they're on my hit list. Why? Why do you travel? Restlessness, adventure, seeing new places. And what do you get from it when you travel? Interest, excitement, talking to people, seeing new landscapes. I'm a geographer, so it means a big deal to me seeing volcanoes, deserts, ruins. Love it. You seem to be looking at maps of New Zealand. We are, we are yes. yes. Yeah? Yes. It's somewhere where you always want to go. It's very beautiful. We t- everybody that goes there likes it and comes back saying how fabulous it is. It's seeing somewhere different, different countries, different people. And to get a bit of sun. <laughs> and yeah. yes, and different culture as well. Yes, I think it's seeing different people and how they live. Yeah, just widening our horizons, really. Well, I'm planning to go to Iran. But, uh, Why? Because I haven't been there. And it's uh, going to be a much more interesting place in the next year than it has been for some time. Do you travel regularly? Yes. I spend a lot of time in the Himalayas, in the Andes, particularly Bhutan is a place I've been most. It's a fabulous place. And why do you travel? Because I like meeting people. I think we can learn from other cultures. I think there's a great deal of hubris in the West about uh, our way of life and so forth. And I think uh, particularly in the developing and uh, the least developed world, there are still a lot of behaviours and cultural aspects uh, from which we can learn. And do you feel that you personally learn from it? Yes, without a doubt. Enjoy your trip. You really don't know what life's about until you see what no life is about, what unlife is about, what life is not about. We all think that we're socially aware and that we know privation, suffering, oppression. Ha! You know, I mean, anytime I hear some college kids spouting off about anarchism, I say, come with me to Mogadishu. I will show you anarchism. alive, personal growth, overcoming personal challenges, curiosity as to how other people live, um, other cultures to try and experience the world and see something different. Perspective, it's about broadening their outlook. To encounter Corinne Usher, a clinical psychologist, on the reasons we travel. Excitement and adventure, escape, taking time out from mundane pursuits and responsibilities to admire the world's beauty and and see nature, fun, romance, relaxation, the weather, shopping, nightlife, to be looked after, having memories and a story to tell. There is a relationship between travel and creativity and it's supported by a whole body of research showing greater open-mindedness to new ideas, more outward, expansive and creative thinking. There's a researcher called Lal Jha who ran an experiment with two groups of university students in Indiana and it was a creative task which involved him asking people to generate a number of modes of different transport. The difference was he told one group of students that the study was designed by overseas students living in Greece and he told another group of students that the study was designed just down the road. And guess what? The group of students who thought the task came from Greece generated a great deal more transport options than those living locally. Instead of just buses, trains and planes and automobiles. They thought about tuk-tuks, segway machines, they thought about bicycles, ferries, and there were horses and carts and just a whole different range of options because they were thinking more expansively rather than being constrained by the limitations of the options that they had on their own doorstep. 
just thinking about somewhere different opened up their mindset a little bit. With my 30th birthday approaching, I thought I should do something bigger than the stuff I'd done before. I thought I should do bigger stuff than bungee jumping and skydiving. And, and On his 30th and birthday, uh, Sihle Kumalo, a Zulu from South Africa, decided to become a travel writer. He didn't go to New York or Paris, Phnom Penh or Machu Picchu. Instead, he first followed a route along the length of Africa, from the Cape of Good Hope to Cairo. It's for me to be able one day to have a chat with my grandkids and say, you know, your grandfather was able to do this, this and that. So it's all part of just living a fulfilling life, which one day I'll be able to look back and be proud of. The route Cape to Cairo is a very famous route. Lots of yes. people, a uh, lot of white people have written about it. Were you trying to reclaim that route in some way? Well, it was important for me to do that trip, specifically because, as you rightfully say, it has been predominantly been done by white people. And it was also important for me just to show that we as Africans also do travel, by the way. You know, maybe the issue is just that we do not document most of our travels as maybe white people will do. So you could say, yes, it was partly reclaiming that that. I'm doing this so-called classic route, but I'm a black African, I'm exploring my very own continent, and I'm going to put my side of the story that what do I think of not only just the route, but also of the continent based on my experience and what I've seen. It was partly just to set the record straight that, well, this is not the dark continent, and here's a black person saying it who has explored his very own continent in his own terms. Do you think there's any merit in the argument that you can travel to claim a place, to claim that you've been there, but also in some ways to possess it, at least possess memories of it? I truly agree with that. On two fronts, yes, you can claim it whilst you're there, but even more important is the memories. The fact that because I've been to Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, because I've been to Cairo, because I've been to Bamako, I can, even if I'm not there right now, I'm able to look back and reclaim it over and over again. So it's not just whilst you are there, it also becomes part of you. You know, the things that you saw, the experiences, and it's definitely partly about claiming stuff. And that is why we travel. We want to claim certain areas, at least for memory's sake. Do you think then that travel may help us to reflect more on ourselves? I think it's a fantastic opportunity to reflect on ourselves. I mean, for a start, you know, we don't have the usual demands, the phone calls, the emails, and you've actually got time to think a little bit more about yourself. And in that period of reflection, people start to apply this greater receptivity to new ideas, to be able to think more creatively about solving problems in their everyday lives at home and taking new approaches to them. My perfect vacation involves never stepping off my own property except to go to the hardware store. Is there a place that you would be willing to travel as a tourist? I've never been to Chile, and I think it would be lots of fun to go down there and maybe to go skiing. I did. I Supposedly, I was in Kyrgyzstan once, and I ended up actually taking a horseback trek through the mountains of Kyrgyzstan, which was fabulous. And I'd like to see West Africa. I'm fascinated by the art of Western Africa, so I would like to go there as a tourist. I took my wife with me to the Yeltsin re-election in Moscow. You old romantic. And, uh, yeah, well, yes, exactly. But uh, we took the Trans-Siberian Railroad after the election was over. It was uh, five days and four nights or something like that to get to Vladivostok. Uh, this is absolutely the most gorgeous ride. I've got a sneaking suspicion, despite all your protestations, that there is a tourist lurking inside you. You want to go to Chile? You went horseback riding in Kyrgyzstan? You are a you are a secret tourist. I put it to you, PJ O'Rourke, but you are you a know, secret I, tourist. I, I think I confess to the charge, actually. Yeah. So even PJ O'Rourke, professionally grumpy, sees the benefit of travel. But the interesting thing is that for PJ, Corinne Usher and Sihle Kumalo, the journey only reaches fulfilment when they reach home. 
For Sikhle, it's about bringing back memories and moral tales to share one day with children, maybe grandchildren. I will tell them about the humanity of the Africans in general. We, specifically in South Africa, we, we often get told that one of the biggest causes of crime is poverty. But I've traveled through other African countries where there is more poverty, but there is less crime. In Lilongwe, there was this cab driver who took me to an internet cafe then, and I had to spend about an hour there. And he said, no, look, fine, I will take your bag with me whilst I'm doing other things, and then I'll come back within an hour's time. I was very worried, what if this guy disappeared? But he came back, and my bag had not been tampered with. So it's those stories like that, that fascination about how humane other people are, irrespective of how little they have. Travel also interrupts the assumptions that you make about yourself in everyday life. So you might, for example, tell yourself that you're a risk-averse kind of person, so I couldn't possibly apply for that particular job. And then one day on holiday, you find yourself skiing off a mountain with a parachute behind you, or singing in a karaoke bar, or taking a bungee jump. And it suddenly forces you to reappraise your options and what you can do. And instead of thinking what you can't do, you know, perhaps you are more ambitious and gutsy than you thought you were. Perhaps you can apply for that job. There is no way you would find me jumping off a mountain with a parachute. There is no way I you did. Would, there is no way you would find me <laughs> bungee jumping. I did. I and you wouldn't sing at a karaoke bar. If you didn't sing at a karaoke bar. I don't sing karaoke. <laughs> I did do all of those things, <laughs> and I never thought I could do them at all. And did it change you? <laughs> do you know, I think it did. I think I was probably at a point in my life where I could either have stuck in the career that I was in, or I could have taken another step. And I think just doing some of those things made me realise that actually I was a little bit more of a high flyer than I thought I could be. Do you think your travel has changed you? Oh, sure. I mean, it changed me in this sense. It made me a patriot of Western civilization. I mean, I don't think one really knows the meaning of Western civilization. And I, I don't mean conservative Western civilization. I don't mean liberal Western civilization. I mean, just plain from the Renaissance down to now, Western civilization. Until you've been someplace that doesn't have any Western civilization, you don't know how good you had it, you know, being, being born where we were born. Thanks for listening to The Y Factor. If you'd like to hear more of our programmes, there's a wide range of them on our website. Everything from nationality to nostalgia to nudity, drawing, the moon and much more. Visit bbcworldservice.com forward slash Y